All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another edition of Shabbat Lounge. We appreciate you being here. And um, as always, we appreciate any comments, likes, uh, subscriptions that you can provide. And uh, as always, we ask if you find this beneficial and useful that you'd share it with someone. And I'm joined in the studio today with Jake. And Jake, Howdy. Jake, um, you're supposed to ask me, how am I doing today? How are you doing today, Matt? I'm doing fine as frog hair. And but frogs don't have hair, Matt. Exactly. So that's one of those Texas expressions apparently you don't say in Pennsylvania. We do but, not say that. So but if you're fine as frog hair, that means things are really good. Things are going good for you because frogs don't have hair. So that you know, that's it's so fine you can't see it. That's right. Got it. That's right. I'll, maybe I'll carry that back and tell that to my mother. And see what she says. Yes, she probably will be confused. <laughs> <laughs> Although she probably knows. Who you know, mothers. Yeah, yeah. They know things. So don't you have a word for me today? Yes. There. So there's a Polish sausage that I don't think you've ever heard of called kielbasa. Uh, no, I don't know what a kielbasa is. Um, so you know we do have bratwurst, but I know what those are. But and those are t typically non-kosher, and I'm not able to eat them. Is a kielbasa a kosher thing? It can be. Can typically, it be. it's not. But you can get your all beef kielbasa, which mm -hmm. is what we go after. And uh, but yeah, it's just a. It's so strange when when people say they don't even know what that is. <laughs> mm -hmm. It makes no sense to me, but. It's just a Polish kind of sausage. They love it with their sauerkraut and stuff. Yeah. So. Sounds good. You eat it like in a bun. You know what's really good is, yeah, you could eat it in a bun. Fry it on the grill is really good. Or if you uh, uh, put it in a crock pot with some barbecue sauce and a beer, mm. it's actually very good. Mm -hmm. And it is nice and good for you. Well. So. Mm. Sounds Fant good. It's fantastic. So, so you recommend that. Well, it's always good to learn something um, from the land of Pennsylvania. Yes. And from Texas. Yes. Uh, very good. So well, I understand you have something interesting that's uh, maybe a, a seasonable thing. Uh, we're in the season of, of uh, the pagan winter solstice. Uh, right. Ho holiday time. Yeah, and uh, I ran across this... This is not of my own making, but it's something I heard, and at one point I saw a post on it, a blog on it, or something. I saw it somewhere on the online and in the interwebs, and I cannot find it again, but it's, it was very interesting to me, and most people haven't heard this, so I figured we'd bring it, we'd bring it here so, so that everyone can be involved. Since we have such a wide audience, yes. that now everyone will have heard it. That's right. So worldwide. Yeah. So the whole the point of this one is, don't be a Scrooge. Okay. You don't want to be a Scrooge. So if you've heard that phrase, what does that what does that mean to you typically? Well, I definitely I've seen and read Christmas Carol by Mr. Charles Dickens and uh, seen the play and. Um, definitely, I would assume the Scrooge is somebody that's very stingy and doesn't like to spend money and doesn't, you know, especially he tends to be a wealthy person and, um, you know, has employees that he makes work really hard and work through the Christmas day, uh, regardless of what they have going on, doesn't seem to care about, you know, what family things they have going on and, doesn't even want to give them that one day off per year to uh, participate in them. And have you ever been told that by someone because of your your stance on Christmas? Have you has anyone said, Matt, you're being a Scrooge? No, no one has ever really told me that about uh, about Christmas. But maybe you know, if I'm wanting to be cheap on something and not spend the money, they'll be like, you know, you're Scrooge. Okay. Um. So. Generally, right, it's referring to someone that's unwilling to give to others, right? Screwed from the story, uh, doesn't want to give to the charity, doesn't the government take care of that and all this stuff. 
uh, and then or the pole houses, uh, and then or it's just someone that has a bad attitude about Christmas will get that label too. So someone stingy and miserly and greedy, or someone who is grumpy at Christmas time. Um, and right, it's referencing Ebenezer Scrooge from the Christmas Carol story um, who is portrayed that way at the beginning anyway so I think there's a couple points I want to make about about this and uh, one it has been made over and over again about the anti-semitism in that story about how he's uh, a greedy banker Jew with a pointy nose if you read the story it describes him as a with a pointy nose and clearly his name is is of the Jewish uh, sound to it. With Ebenezer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but actually I never had even thought about that till you said that one day. And I was like, huh, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. And so, uh, but at the end, right, uh, uh, he opens his heart to the spirit of Christmas and then he's become mm -hmm. saved. Right, as it were. Um, and then I, I suppose you could say it's only anti-Semitic towards the Jewish faith, towards Judaism, not towards Jews themselves. Mm -hmm. Right? It's just more towards the faith. Because once he's once he's converted to the spirit of Christmas, he's everyone loves him and he's the good guy now. Um so uh let's see. So considering the three ghosts as the three spirits of Christ's mass, right? There's a trinity of spirits, right? Uh, and they visit a greedy Jewish banker to preach redemption and salvation, right? Because these Jewish folks don't get it, right? So we need to convert them. Uh, so yeah, there's some of that. There's some of the anti-Semitism anti and... Uh, when you hear people say, don't be a Scrooge, they're really saying, don't be the Scrooge from the beginning of the story, right? Um, but what I'm saying is don't be any of the Scrooge, right? The whole way through, he's not, he's, he's all mixed up. Hmm. Um, so, uh, we'll, we'll start kind of here. So lest you forget, Scrooge, when he goes back to the past, uh, He's shown as participating in an office Christmas party with the previous owner, Fezziwig. Or, oh, uh huh, yeah. Um, so he was, if he was Jewish, he at least he wasn't a practicing Jew, in that he was abstaining from those kind of traditions. Um, but a kind of a kind of an aside there. Um, does anybody else find it strange? that practicing Jews uh, will promote the keeping of Christmas by non-Jews. It is strange. It's weird to me. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's like a good enough for thee but not for me. And it, it's, it's like a, we got the right thing but uh, go ahead and do that. It's... I don't understand that mindset. I guess mm -hmm. maybe I'm crazy. No, you're not crazy. That's uh, that is a strange thing to wrap your mind around that they could do that. But yeah, and they I think do. I think it comes to the fact that they they respect Christianity most from what I understand. They respect Christianity, and they just think, okay, well, we just don't believe that part of it. And if you believe that part. Sure, do the do the Merry Christmas, and they they also think that it's the worship of the Savior being born by the Christians. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think there's not the pagan I idea attached to it through Judaism a lot either. At least, uh, you know, people that are vocal about about those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting you bring that up because. Keely and I had to go out, and we went shopping Friday night, and the we went to uh, the store that has 
red on it in like a um, circular shape on the logo. Okay. And um, so you all probably know what sto- what store that would be, and they had all kinds of Christmas music just blaring, and they were, you know, it's just odd how that is so pushed, and you can't get away from it, yeah. and everyone seems to embrace it. It doesn't matter if they are Muslim or Hindu or Jewish or whatever everyone just kind of adopts it and, and and takes part in it yeah nobody seems to question it or or you know they just go along with it yeah um uh one of the other things that i was gonna ask is escaping me oh yeah on on that note leave your comments what do you say when you're leaving a store and someone says merry christmas because that was like one of the first things for us was like, uh, no response. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like, you get all like, oh, I didn't even think about what I need to say in this situation because mm-hmm. I don't want to wish Godspeed on the person that you know isn't uh, tells you basically not to wish Godspeed on the person. But I'm not. I don't want to support the Merry Christmasing. So why would I say Merry Christmas to you as well? And we kind of fell on. Well, have a blessed day, or something like that. Mm-hmm. But, but uh, if I don't know if you have no, thoughts that's, on that. No, that's that's good. You know, I do get that a lot. You know, because I'm in the public and I am in a position in sales, and you know, I do have to kind of be careful with things that I say because I don't want to turn. I have to be pretty neutral with mm-hmm. my clients, and um, but and so they will tell me sometimes things like that, and I'll I usually just say thank you. And sometimes, you know, I use I usually just say that, mm-hmm. and that's it, you know, because I know that they mean mean it to be some good thing, right? And so I don't I don't feel like I'm really participating. I just say thank you, yeah. And they're probably expecting me to say Merry Christmas back to you or something, yeah. But I just leave it at thank you. <laughs> yeah, and I just wonder what goes through people's mind when they <laughs> when they hear that, but. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I did, I did it today to some somebody, and I could tell she was really wanting me, I think, to say Merry Christmas back to her, and I didn't. Yeah, so. it causes people to take a step back, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yes, if you have any uh, tips on responses to that, add them in the comments. Yeah, that'd be good. We'd like to hear, hear that. Yeah. Um, so anyway... So I'm saying don't be any of the Scrooge, not the Scrooge from the beginning, not the Scrooge at the end, okay? So the story shows a Jewish man who refuses to participate in the pagan holy day of Christmas, right? And then he's berated for it constantly, right? They set up decorations, and they're foisted upon him, and when he doesn't like it, um, then he's met with scorn from the people around him. Uh, they're trying to force him into accepting their their feast day, their holy day, uh, basically their idolatry, essentially. Uh, granted, Ebenezer doesn't come at it with like love. <laughs> so uh, we're so, not saying we think he's a good guy right. necessarily, or right. someone to emulate. Right. We're we're still saying don't be a Scrooge, mm-hmm. but kind of for a different reason maybe than what is typically meant um so let's see yeah but at least at the beginning he's holding to his principles he's like no i'm not doing that christmas stuff right and then he goes home where a demon spirit comes to him and tells him to change his quote-unquote evil ways right uh so this is ebenezer engaging in necromancy Mm. for one uh and if he was reading his bible he would have been instructed to to uh dismiss that spirit right uh he didn't read first samuel 27 28 yeah. with the witch of the witch indoor yeah yeah so, <laughs> and then so he's visited by three other demons uh and they use terror and fear to con him into worshiping uh, a false deity who was born on December 25th. Hmm. And so Scrooge abandons his principles, 
out of fear from demons and turn to the spirit of Christmas for his salvation. So don't be a Scrooge. Don't deny the truth and turn from your principles only to follow the fun in Christmas, uh, the fun of Christmas out of the fear from evil spirits and the harassment from others. So our message is don't be a Scrooge at all, any of it, any of the Scrooging. That's so. good. So that definitely was a different take on that story. And it is something you have to think about because people ask you, what are you doing for Christmas? And what are you doing? You know, uh, you know, they do ask you those kinds of questions. And if you haven't thought about an answer, you do need to have one. So. Yeah. And then um, because it is an opportunity to and then when you get back from work, some some people may already be off work now. And when you come back from work, people are going to ask you what How you did. How was your Christmas vacation? Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I do think that you can answer that in in, in a loving way. Right. And you, you, we don't have to be jerks about it. Yeah. Because you don't you, have to be a Scrooge about it. That's right. You don't have to be a Scrooge about it. Because, you know, you could be like, well, my goodness, <laughs> let me tell you, it's not Christmas. You know, I mean, yeah. you could go and – be ridiculous or yeah. you could just say well in my house we celebrated hanukkah in this time and you know yeah. and and that's an easy kind of softer introduction and then if they have questions if they're kind of interested they might ask you but i find most people will just the conversation just kind of stops it, it kind of walks away yeah they're like it, it oh it just backs away into the bushes <laughs> yeah <laughs> pretend i never said anything right. i liked what you said backing into the bushes <laughs> yeah that's exactly what happens yeah um, so don't be surprised if you get that too right and that's really all i had i just wanted i thought that was an interesting take on on what scrooge really is and uh how you can kind of apply it to a walk, and I thought I just thought that was cool. So yeah, yeah. So as always, you know, uh, we ask for comments. We ask you to investigate these things. Go look it up. See what you think. See if see if it's possible that um, that story has been twisted on its head, and it's different than what you thought it was. And I think there's a high probability that that story has been twisted, and it's not what you thought it was, and it, along with many other things. Yeah. So, but we appreciate your time today. Appreciate your subscribing to the channel. And uh, as always, thank you for listening to Shabbat Lounge. Thanks.